thing. And welcome to our weekly gospel discussions. Today, you just have me, uh, Pastor Mary Ann's on vacation, much deserved and much earned. So um, we wish her all well, Godspeed, and farewell until she returns. So today, um, you are stuck with Pastor Scott, and I'm from New Hanover Evangelical Lutheran Church in Gilbertsville. Today, we're talking a week before what we celebrate in the Christian faith tradition as Worldwide Communion. So today, we're going to have a little bit of a mix. Uh, you'll be hearing enough during communion about our gospel and about uh, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ and and the forgiveness. And so today, I want to share you some Old Testament and what we call the epistle readings are according to John, letters written by John, and then also a psalm that's attributed to King David, to David of uh, David and Goliath fame. So um, listen to them as we talk about the blessings of God and then also the word sanctification uh, that we use big theological terms, but of God's blessing and welcoming us and embracing us always in uh, the history of creation. <laughs> and so this thing of communion is not something new. It's something that God always wanted from the beginning of creation until now, uniting us into one body. So please join along. If you have your Bibles ready, uh, turn your Bibles to Psalm 133. And let us begin. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Here ends the first reading, or psalm, and that's verses 1 to 3 in Psalm 133. Now, if you turn towards the back of the Bible... <laughs> if you have a Bible in sequential order, you'll come to 1 John, and you'll find chapter 4, verses 9 to 11. Let us begin. Are you there yet? Ah, you'll catch up. Please listen. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might have life through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Here ends our second reading. So some things about our readings today. Um, you may not caught it in a psalm, but it is one of all unity. It says that, though, you know, that we want to live together forevermore. And living together in unity. And then also in 1 John, John emphasizes that, that we ought to love one another. I can only uh, imagine that unity happens when everybody shows love. There's no reason to resist if people treat you in love and are kind to you, right? And compassionate to you, take care of you as they would want to be taken care of themselves. Now that's a whole nother gospel discussion. But it reminds me, if I'm going back to the psalm and how our psalms and our Old Testament readings really relate to this whole idea of world communion, of everybody communing one in the body of Christ. You see, Israel at that time, when the psalm was written, you take a look at where Mount Hermon is located, and that's at the very top of Israel. In fact, it sits at a pinnacle, like right there in a very, very, very tip. And it's a strategic point, because after the Seven Day War, Israel reclaimed that point because it's the highest point overlooking Israel, the Golan Heights, which are south in what we call the Western Bank today, or Palestine. And then we also can see into Syria, Damascus, and also see into Lebanon, Beirut, or what we call the enemies of Israel <laughs> in today's terms. Well, so they were back then as well. And so um, it's a very strategic point but it's also the only mountain that has snow in Israel. So it's a ski resort as well. So you could be down in the desert, which down that area, and we talk all the time about Jesus walking around Nazareth. Nazareth is right below there. And uh, those areas, they're barren. They're rocky. Nothing grows. So you can see how important 
Mount Hermanah is. That basically it provides the dew that comes off of it and also the snow it runs down. And it's the source of the Jordan, right? It's one of them. So the source comes down, it, it, it goes in the field, it goes into the dam, the springs of dam, it flows up, and then dam flows into the River Jordan. So what we have here is a very symbolic part. You know, water giving life. What does Jesus do? Believing in Jesus, our baptism. It gives life, eternal life. And so what King David is talking about on sunny days, on days where totally blessed, you have dew. On cloudy days, you don't have dew the next morning. Dew demands to have sunshine and heating up the earth and then the cooling of the night creates the moisture and then comes out. It's a whole scientific process. But what King David is saying, Mount Zion lies at the bottom. So you have this Mount Hermon. So you have basically, it means devoted or sanctified in, in God's terms and in the Hebrew language. And so you have Zion at the very bottom of Israel. So you have the very tip and the very bottom. And Zion means the body of or the church of God and or meaning church, meaning congregation, community, community of God. And or at that time it was Israel, right? The, the tribes of Israel. So what David say, from the very top of the tribes to the very bottom of the tribes, the whole community of God, the Israelites, the chosen ones, the children of God, are blessed, are sanctified, are one in love, and we're in unity. So he's having this prayer, this psalm, that would be used during worships, and people would recite them and say it all the time, that we should, as the tribes, live together in unity, as one. We come to World Communion Sunday, and as we commune around the world, as all Christian faiths are asked to do and are encouraged to do, we commune together, all in one. Now, we don't do it all at the same time because of all different time zones and so forth, but it, it is a recognition on a Sunday, a day of Sabbath, where Christians can get together and notice that we are all unified by the love of God. That's fantastic, isn't it? I love it. And so we can find out whether in the letters of John, explaining about how Jesus Christ was sacrificed for all of us and so that we could be united with God, and or we can see it in the Psalm of David, 133, that God from the very beginning believed and always trying to have us live in love, in unity, because we will all be together in the end. That's fantastic. So until I see you, my friends, and until next week, and next week you'll be stuck with me again because Pastor Marianne's still on vacation, but uh, we will see each other and discuss these exciting parts and interesting parts of the Bible. Take care, and God bless, and I look forward to seeing you next week, and until that time, go get them and show the love of God to one another. Peace, my friends.